How we doing? Fox back again for Sound Design Tutorials, carrying on with the VPS Avenger mini series. Today we're going to be going over the LFO, or Low Frequency Oscillator. This is this section down the bottom here. Um, it looks very basic, but believe me, there's a lot of control in here. You can do some crazy stuff, drawing your own wave shapes. Um, some crazy different triggering options. You can have the drum sequencer to trigger it, step sequencer, different note functions and stuff like that. So let's get started. So what have we got here? We have got, um, it's a basic LFO in regards to the fact that it's got some basic wave shapes in there. To do that, when it's on shape mode, if you click on the actual waveform, you then got these all different, these waveforms that you can choose from. You've got all the classic ones, triangle, ramps, square waves, it's almost like a random sample and hold, a random glide, rounded square waves, some different peak ones, saw waves. These three ones here, these are the CLFOs. We'll go over them in a section in a, in a minute. Different ramps and attack style LFOs. We will quickly modulate the uh, filter cuff, cut off with this. I'll tell you what, let's quickly let's make something a bit. Change this to 95, and you should be able to see the window at the bottom. Maybe 90. Something a bit more pleasing. Yeah, so it is drag and drop where these six little dots are. Click on it, drag it to the filter cutoff, and it automatically maps it and uh, gives you a destination inside the mod matrix. If we click on the mod matrix, we can then give it some destination amount. Introduce some more gain so you can actually hear what I'm doing. So we'll go back to the LFO now. As I say, as well as all of the basic analog classic wave shapes if you like you've got these three clfos clfo one two and three they're all identical and what this does it enables you to be able to draw your own shapes in um to pick these you need to go back to the shape section click on it this is it clfo one clfo two clfo three so if we click on clfo one now whatever we draw in here will change the LFO shape. Um, it's, it's like Serum in regards that you cl double click to create a node and then drag it around once it's clicked by just left clicking and moving the node around. So you can go to town, create some cool step sequence type shapes if you wanted to. If we go back to the shape you can see we've created that LFO curve now. So. <laughs> so you've got three of those so you can draw any sort of shape you want and uh, they are available by clicking on the waveform menu and then they show up here you can change the curvature of these lines or these inputted lines if you like if you click on a point between two nodes drag on it you can create negative or positive curves to smoothen it or do what you would inside Serum. Very, very quite versatile LFO, if I'm honest. The only thing I would like to see is a way to be able to get this and uh, edit it inside this section here because the arpeggiator, drum sequencer, step sequencer, pitch, mod envelopes, mixers, zones, all of this, it's a much bigger window here. Um, I would love to be able to transfer this to there and modulate it in there so you can really get into detail and do some more fine tuning with your LFO shapes. Yeah, man, they may think of doing something like this in the future. You can change it to one shot. If you click here, one shot is highlighted. It's going to go through one cycle of the LFO or the shape that you draw and then it's just going to finish at this point, the last point as it exits its box. Easy peasy, nice and straightforward. Let's change this back to a basic saw wave. So the rate knob. Um, if you uncheck that, uncheck that little yellow button, so nothing is highlighted in these um, note pictures, whatever they are. It's a totally free running LFO in regards to that you can move freely between the speeds, so it goes way down. 
I think it's like four bars it takes for it to do a cycle all the way up to we're on one shot so you can almost get frequency shifter or ring mod style modulation with these when it's really fast Obviously, if then you highlight some of these little note pictures down here, you can do it. Standard note, if you see in the bottom of this section here, it tells you what note you're on. So eighth notes, quarter, half. So all the way up to one over 64th notes, which is very 64 chunks out of a beat, which is very fast. Um, you can then go triplet or dotted. These are like in between your classic beat modulations. I'm sure if you've used an LFO before, you're used, you're used to uh, these different triplet and dotted modes. Um, it was, they're also common on, common on delayed signals and stuff like that. So we'll kick, click it back to just the normal LFO sync rate for now. So then we have some other controls over the LFO. You've got a phase which changes the starting point of the LFO. You'll see it move in this box as we slide it around. You can get it to start anyway through that shape. It does a full cycle all the way back to 100% is a full cycle and back to where it starts. Offset this can make it unipolar or bipolar. You see this blue ring bouncing at the top here. This shows you which way the modulation is going. We have the off offset dead center. It's swinging both left and right equal amounts of from your starting point, which is where this filter cutoff is. If we offset it negative, it'll just go left from the center. Positive. Very useful tool. Um, I very, very use, very, very rarely use LFOs in this standard mode where it swings both ways off axis. It's much easier to picture what you're doing and control the modulation if you have it just going one way and then control the starting point with the actual knob that you're modulating so yeah that is the offset the delay this delays the time that it takes the lfo to come into play um it, this does this modulation wise so you'll hear it's just a yeah, not modulation wide that's the fading it's just an amount of time before you hear the lfo So obviously if the delays all the way in round four, it goes up to a second. And it goes all the way down to very, very short. If you wanted just a bit of an impact, if you made a pluck sound, say, and you wanted it to wobble afterwards, if you wanted the impact of the pluck as you played a note or a chord, you could set a very short delay to, say, quarter of a second or 150 milliseconds. It would let the punch of the pluck go through and then it would play the LFO afterwards. Um, you then have a fade in. This fades in the modulation amount over time, so you will hear the LFO amount getting great greater. It's almost like shrinking this down to nothing. If you imagine this was dead flat at the center line, and then slowly gets a bigger bigger shape. That, that is in effect what this fade in is doing, but it's time based. So again, it goes all the way around to a second. You can really hear it starting smaller modulation amount and getting bigger. Again, these are very useful tools if you're making um, risers and stuff. I'm a bit disappointed they made the delay and the fade only a second. I don't know why you would want that. I mean, I use LFOs and stuff all the time when I'm making risers, and I have a, a delayed amount of time, sometimes like four or five bars, just slowly bringing an LFO in as a riser is creating. But you could use an envelope to do that in different ways. You could use an envelope on the destination amount inside the matrix section, but that's getting a bit more involved. So delay and fade in. You have control over the fade in curve as well. If you click on this little picture of a sine wave, you can have control of whether the fade in is very linear or logarithmic or whether it's more exponential so it increases faster as it gets towards the end of the the shape if you like the fade in curve um 
yeah, that's virtually it. The only ones are the trigger modes. This is where it gets really, really fun. So a free LFO means it's constantly running. You can see at the top there. Anytime we press a note, each note is just going to jump in on that LFO. It's only one LFO. It's not per voice. So no matter when you bring in a note, they're all going to be pulsing at the same time. Next trigger mode is first MIDI note. This means if you play notes in succession, it is going to use the first MIDI note to trigger the LFO, and then all of them will follow in sync again. So let's do away with this delay and a fade in. You can tell everything's lovely in, in sync, no matter how many voices you introduce or what time, but the LFO is triggered from the first note played. This one is the opposite. Every time you bring in a new note, it starts the LFO again, but all the notes before follow the LFO at that rate. So very, very similar. It's quite hard to hear the difference unless you play very, very fast sporadic sounds. You will hear the last note then triggers the LFO and everything follows that. Again, very cool, not something you see very often the last note. Arpeggiators. This is where you can use an arpeggiator to trigger the LFO. So if we turn the arpeggiator on, look at the arp. Every time a new note in this arpeggiated sequence is triggered, it's going to re-trigger the LFO. This is very cool if you use like a real plucky sort of shape like this. Actually, let's create one inside the C LFO. We'll be able to get a nice something not so steep so if we slow the speed down then the LFO is going to respond accordingly still play arpeggiated sounds obviously the arpeggiator needs to be turned on for this to work it does not actually that is very cool ah, it does it just takes the last speed then but yeah you can draw some uh, change the speed again we turn the arp on So that, uh, that shape that we've just created is creating an almost plucky style effect. So every time the arpeggiated, every time a new note comes in inside the arpeggiator or the arp sequence, it re-triggers the LFO. The next one is the drum sequencer. Um, I am going to be doing tutorials on this now because I've taught myself in the last couple of days how to use this. I'm going to uncheck this. I'm going to quickly load Dubstep 2 Drums. I created my own sequence yesterday when I was learning this called Fox Dubstep 2. So what is this doing now? If we go to the mixer section, uh, you can obviously hear the drums. This is a little drum groove that I made yesterday when I was messing around. You can hear that LFO shape that we created, that plucky LFO shape, is being triggered by any incoming note from the drum sequencer. Now you can, you don't have to have it have a whole drum loop like this. You can delete notes and just have it triggering whenever, wherever you want inside this sequencer. One thing I have found that is very, very cool is if you go to the mixer section, if we go to the amplifiers and turn the drums totally down, the drum sequence is still affecting. The, the drum signal is still triggering the LFO, but you don't hear the drums, so... Sorry, I lost my trail of thought there. Um, what was I going to say? Yes, yeah, very, very cool for creating sort of trancey bass lines if you wanted to. You can uh, initialize the drum sequencer I 
if I can remember how to do that. You could just delete it all manually. Probably a bit too in depth for this for if you just start if you're watching this just starting out with Avenger. You really are gonna have to get to grips with the drum sequencer before you can use this feature, but we'll quickly Let's keep the speed on 16th. We'll turn the length down just to four bars. As you can see, it doesn't matter what drum note you introduce or, or where it is or, or what it is, it's still going to trigger the LFO. Obviously, you can play the drums behind it if you wanted. Let's try something else, if there's some drum and bassy ones. back to the mixer speed it up Obviously, you can have the drums going beyond it. It does generally get messy. <laughs> Every single the, one of these hits is going to re-trigger the LFO. But yeah, you get the general idea. After that, we have oscillator. All oscillators. This is just the incoming signal from the oscillators. You can choose all of the oscillators. Every time one of them is triggered, um, it's going to redo uh, the LFO cycle. That's almost like MIDI on. Uh, drums, you can choose individual drum hits if you like. That's cool. So yeah, we've got this sequence. We could say we want the bass drum only to trigger the LFO. That is much more usable. Now that is definitely something I would use. So yeah, you could uh, have a drum groove going in the background, one trigger activation. Again, this drum sequencer really is a lot of fun and you can get really in depth and do some real cool patterns in it. Yeah, anyway, that is the LFO I've been waffling on now. I say very, very capable. I hope I've given you a good idea of what you can do with it. If you've liked this, please give it a thumb up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Please subscribe if you aren't already, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Um, I have been given a cool Max for Live plugin by Audio Modern. It's like an arpeggiator, riff generator thing. I'll be going over that. I may slip that in between the next tutorial that I do with this, which will be seeing as we've done all of the basic functions on the page we might as well go through the wavetable editor why not we've done all the basic lfo things now so Yep, anyway, that's for the next one. We'll be going over the wavetable editor and the wavetable waveforms and the way you can edit them inside the editor. You scroll through the wavetable, you can see what's going on. You smooth it out. You can use this as a modulator in its own right to modulate things. Very, very capable section, this wavetable section. So, yeah, please stay tuned for the next one. Cheers.